I've managed to get the entire keyboard assembly out. So, uh, don't need to undo that, that screw. So there was one there and a pair here. Uh, there's a little foil one there. Now a little one on the foil there. They gotta come out. These three in the middle gotta come out. And on this end was the same as the other one there and two there, I think there and there. And there was a foil one, I think, there. So the screws I've got is one and two and one and a three and a one and a two and a one two. That's the screws I've got. This cable, I've tried taking that out and it was quite delicate. Much easier to take it off the motherboard end. The other one I did manage to get out. It's from there on the motherboard. So it's in this red and grey, grey or green, can't tell. So I've done that and it hasn't helped a huge amount because this bloody great aluminium bar is still in the way of those bloody screws. But at least we're getting somewhere. So yeah, I had to take the disk drive out before it could get the keyboard out, I think. That's over there. So there's like not a lot left of this. But, uh, hmm. While I've got the keyboard assembly out, there were two notes that stick, two black notes. This one and this one. I marked them with sticky labels before I took it apart. Um, I did see somebody on YouTube just now prizing this off and then you can just take the keys off and swap them around and stuff. So I'm going to have a go at that without... Pull this off. Oop. The zoom will just pop back on. I'm bloody open it will. Apparently you have to take the white keys out first. Um, no, nope, they don't lift out at all. So that's a lie. I'll play with that in a minute. So I'm trying to get this aluminium strip out here. I've taken four screws out um, in, in these spaces. This here is the front panel. That's the front panel. There doesn't seem to be a lot else than the front panel screwed to the side panels. Um, oh, the front panel comes right round as well, so I suppose that's the chassis. I've just got to get this out, but it disappears. I've taken four screws out. There's the fourth. It just sort of disappears behind this block. Where's that? We the hard drive's out, but there's the inside of the the joystick thingy there. So I presume I'm going to have to get this out. It's not this, which is the chassis. It's just this. This. Try taking that one screw out and see if it will slide out or something. So I've taken out screws here and here. Didn't have to take that one out. And now this whole thing lifts off there. So this panel should now lift out somehow, but it's not getting quite tight. Taking all the screws out, the five screws to the sound board. It's got the sound outputs in the MIDI. Flip that over. I see nothing at all. But this metal aluminium strip was kind of the uh, 
the um, two grooves at the front were kind of stuck on the two grooves in there. That's all it was. Just needed a good shift in. I got it out. So now I can get to these screws on the display unit at last. Taking those two out, the little white uh, posts, spacers come with them underneath the black washers. And now I'm going to take these three out. I think that's right. Right, so yeah, five screws. Two, two, and three, which are the five with the areas that look like glue. One, two, three, four, and a fifth one there. Then the, you've also got to take out um, one, two, and where these slidey looking things are, the ones with the white spaces, three, four, and then one, two, three. After you can get access to them. And then when you put your hand underneath, the whole thing slides and drops out. And then we have a display unit that we can work on. I hope. Let's have a look. This is obviously some sort of power board here, connector here, coming from over the supply power supply way. So I'm going to disconnect that, and then the whole thing should come out. So before we even start, the connector, which obviously powers the um, backlight, doesn't seem to have the same connector. Um, but weirdly, they're the same size, and they might just fit, so you might be able to force it on. Anyway, let's strip down this unit and see if the ribbon cables are a problem, because this looks nothing like that. I'm hoping that this is a secondary ribbon cable down to a green PCB and then there's another one then that just clips in. So six screws and this whole plastic bevel comes away. What's here is looking nothing like what I've bought. That's obviously the connector for the touch screen this ribbon cable here. I don't know. This display looks absolutely nothing like the one I've bought so far. Let me investigate further. Well, I have to, to conclude that these two things are not the same. Um, I'm tempted, if it's a completely broken display, I would be tempted to bend these lugs back and see what was underneath. It's possible there's one of these sharps inside there, but I doubt it. It would physically fit. The screw holes and everything are the same size. Obviously, this ribbon cable, which is soldered to this very complicated board, um, is in completely the wrong place, and it is slightly larger than this ribbon cable. Unless there's one of these inside, obviously that ribbon cable is connected to the touch screen, which I believe is just glued on by the look of it. You'd have to prise it off. It's possible there's a sharp inside that metal frame. But I think all the adverts that show one of these and say this is for the Korg, no. The 
pulled the cog apart for nothing at the moment. So we've got to look into this product, see if maybe I can get that, or fork out for an expensive one. I could put it back, of course, but I mean, now that I've got it apart, it's worth trying to get it repaired. Oh, well.